Hi. Hello. Hi. I have a beer and some paper and a clicker, and that's like too many, too many things for me. Um, I thought that would be like a fun typographic gag, but it's already some people have asked me what's gone wrong with my first slide, so I don't know whether that's even working. It's, um, I am Andrew Diprose, I'm Creative Director of Wired. Uh, I have been at Wired since launch in 2008, and it's my 20th year as a editorial designer this year, which makes me feel kind of old. Um, thank you, it's nice that for having me here. I'm a real, I said this earlier, without gushing too much, I'm a big fan of the site and um, regularly on there, so don't look too closely at Wired because you'll find where we get all our great talent from. Okay, here we go, great. That kind of shows you what I've been up to for the last 20 years. You can see there were some fallow times in that, in that, um, in that line up. I, I started with work experience at ID Magazine and kind of went from the ID Magazine to Smash It's, if anybody knows what Smash It's is, that's quite a leap. Um, maybe in the wrong direction, some people might think, but I kind of enjoyed it at the time. Uh, okay, here we go. This is kind of a before and after. It's, 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 it's like dumb and dumber. Um, Pre-Wired when I was at, at uh, GQ magazine and then after Wired, I obviously only have one face for a contributor's picture and it's only getting worse over time. What I want to do, I've already started waffling. What I want to do, I've only got 10 minutes, which is um, it's a long time if you're at a dentist, but a very short amount of time if you want to rattle through some content. Um, I like to go to, um, to hear people talk and I like to have something I can take away with me. So I've tried to make it super relevant. Um, some things I've learned to Wired Magazine, I've got five points. That way you can know when I'm starting, that way you can know when I'm finishing. Okay, here we go. Launching Wired Magazine. Or criticism and the art of sucking it up. Um, I don't know how many people here have launched a magazine at a big publishers, but there are no shortage of people to tell you what they think. Um, I came from GQ magazine and I, I, at that time I felt like I pretty much knew what I was doing in magazine design and I think that was a really big mistake. Um, I, the, the, the first, my first meeting for Wired magazine kind of went like this. I pretty much designed a whole dummy. I printed it out at 97% and put it in a flip book. I got to the, um, the managing director's office and he looked at the first page and said, mm, oh, the type looks a little bit small and it confused me all the way through. Every single page he turned, he got progressively more angry till I ended up walking on my own down the corridor with the editor going, Andrew, Andrew, as I walked off into the distance angrily. Um, I had a lot to learn. This was my first issue. Scott, who was the art director of Wired in, in the US at that time, said to me, I think you're gonna, you know, you're gonna look back and you're probably gonna hate the first year, year and a half of the magazine. You know, that's healthy. I can hardly look at the first three, maybe four years, and we've been going five years. Um, I actually think that's healthy, but the point I'm really trying to make in a rambling way is that, um, you know, really at that time I wasn't seeking out criticism. You know, anybody who had something to say really was a, you know, I felt threatened by. Um, one day, I don't know what happened, but I kind of had this, like, complete, like, I don't know, it was like a complete change of thought and I suddenly realised that all the people who offer me advice, whether it's from the US, whether it's from management, whether it's from previous publications, they all had something to say and, and probably 50% of it was very valid and I was the person who really needed to learn. And when I started taking that on board, the magazine looked better and in those six months I probably learned more than, um, the, you know, than I've done in the last you know, four years before, before that time. There's what I am. <laughs> I'm not even going into the voice, but since the Will I Am cover, I kind of feel like a bit better about it. Okay, why is no longer a magazine? When I started, I did think it was a magazine. Here we go. There's print magazine in the middle there. Basically, Wired is a brand. I didn't think about it like that at the time, but Wired these days is a brand. We are very proud that we have integrity, we tell important stories, and we are creative. Now, when we started, we were just doing a print magazine, and nobody had held an iPad before, nobody had looked at any content on a phone. 
There was no idea that there would be wide conferences or a consulting business or a podcast. Um, this has happened in the last five. This has happened in the last five years. Um, I have to, I've had to change my thinking about how I work, and my, the way I work, and my workload has changed. And I think it's healthy that now I am thinking of how we view the content specific to the medium rather than just thinking about printed pages, lovely though they are. You know, when it comes down to it, I don't know how many people are, I should have said this earlier, how many people, I presume you're all magazine lovers, which is really lovely. But um, it's interesting for me, I've got to have my head half in the print camp, half in the digital camp, half in thinking about how we're working on the brand when it comes to, um, to events and consulting. Okay, I'm already on point three, or maybe I'm rattling through it. Okay, here we go. There is an idea, there is an idea in there somewhere, damn it. I don't know how you get your kicks creatively, I assume you're all creative people, and for me, it really distills down. The pleasure I get from my work is from having an idea, a si whether it's a simple idea or something very clever, and seeing it come to life. And if I can affect an audience with that idea, then the pleasure just as increases. Um, and magazines are the perfect place to have this, you know, whether weekly, monthly, or yearly. The idea that I, I can think myself out of a tough situation and hopefully, you know, create something of value and tell a story to an audience, and the audience is there, is immensely satisfying, and that is an utter, utter joy with magazines. Okay, this is, the, the editor's like, we've got a cover to do, I think it's all gonna be about failure, um, which kind of was part of my first point. The idea, a very wide idea, I'm sure you all know, the, of, that, that, that failing fast and learning from your mistakes and moving on is really to be heartily approved of. Um, a lot of Silicon Valley companies that we have, we have featured and a lot of very uh, successful tech companies have started with that. The people obviously haven't you know, struck gold on their first go. They've made a lot of failures, they've learned from it and they've moved on and that's really approved of. This country and Europe, I think, it's still a little bit frowned upon. Anyway, either way, the idea of a cover that's all about failure didn't, um, you know, it didn't whet my appetite. The idea that Alan with sugar was on it just, just compounded the misery. Um, you know, we, 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 we racked our brains and I feel like it's one, it was one of my toughest covers and one of my most pleasurable covers with, with, with the outcome. The readership really engaged with it and I, I'm pretty proud of it. Um, we did, I, you know, with no irony, the printers did say, is there something wrong with this cover? <laughs> okay, this is another one. The cover story is all about Google algorithms. That was a joy as well. Um, important, a very, very important company, very, very important story, but a little bit tough visually. For the cover, we just went super, super simple. We die cut a, a hole in the center of the cover, Google, just like Google, everybody recognises the logo. Is that going on? Is that moving on? There you go. That's the cover. That was the inside of the first page. Made it a little bit tough to sell an advert on the inside of the front cover with a die cut. But um, again, the readership loved it and that was our highest selling issue of the year. Um, I have this constant sort of... Um, this kind of dialogue about some of our, our some of our most successful covers are some of the covers which are the simplest. You know, we tell a very simple message, we get it straight out there, and the readership like it. Everybody seems to like it. I spent weeks crafting a cover. Uh, case in point being my 60th cover for Wired, where I had a cover meeting the other day. We've been working on it for three weeks. Turned up at the managing director's office for a meeting about it. Didn't like it. First cover turned down in five years. So um, I think there's something said for doing, doing something simply. This was another one, Raspberry Pi. I assume you all know about Raspberry Pi. 16 pound computer, massive British success story, global success story. It's just a small computer. I, this was our end result. This was how we got there. We wanted to do something simple and heroic. We had a nice, case made for it that kind of glowed and it was transparent, it was nice, we had beautiful photography from Wilson Hennessy. And I wanted to speak to, uh, I wanted to work with Jordan Metcalf, I don't know whether you know his work, for, um, 
for, for absolutely ages, and he worked on this thing, and it was on the far left-hand side. I thought that was amazing. It kind of looked heroic and a bit filmic and epic, and, you know, it was beautiful. The typography was beautiful. The shadow was beautiful. Nobody liked the colour, and everybody thought it would be miserable and dark on newsstand. So we pushed it, and we made it simpler. We went to the middle. We had this bevel type. This was over a couple of weeks. Stripped it right down, made it super simple. And when it actually came down to it, much as I loved, loved, loved his work, the one on the right-hand side was the one we ran with, which was our simple typeface with a bit of a fade on it. But it sold really, really, really well. I don't know really what you're going to learn from that, but um, I can't. <laughs> OK, surround yourself with talent. OK, I'm going to try and speed up a little bit. This is another really obvious point. Especially when I started Wired magazine, our art department was three people. Now it's nine people. But um, it was me, the picture editor, and my deputy. And there was a feeling that I wanted to try and do everything myself. And I think the magazine was worse because of it. Um, over time, I have tried to surround myself with the best people I could find, talented people, people who who I can go to, people who I, who I can say, oh, I think, you know, you are going to be better with composition on this layout, you are going to be better dealing, uh, detailing on this layout, and people I can go to with no kind of sense of pride that are only going to make the magazine better. It's taken me a while to learn about that. Um, and luckily I'm surrounded by some brilliant people, and they are a joy to work with. There they are, slightly desaturated for your enjoyment. Okay, you know, surrounding myself with talent came, uh, uh, came, is a lot, f is a lot um, further reaching than the, than the staff. Uh, years and years ago, you know, my first year as a, as a magazine designer, I had a friend who was working on a newspaper, and he was talking about working with this amazing photographer, he was so excited, and I was a little bit like, yeah, what, you know, whatever. I was a little bit naive. I didn't really realise, I spent the whole of my time probably pre-wired, trying inadvertently to design myself um, out of a fix, rather than finding the raw talent who were going to supply the best illustration and photography or filmmaking that I could find. And it took me until, you know, I was, I don't know, much, too, much longer than it should do for me to find that. Now, with Wired, all I want to do is make a great environment for people to show off their work. I want to show that I respect their work, I want it to be a nice environment, and I want to coax people to do their best work for me, because quite often the people for editorial won't be doing it to make the dollar. They're going to be doing it because it's going to be a nice place to show off their work. Nadav Kanda, beautiful, like the um, Thames link that we have photographed by Christopher Rudquist. These are some of my favourite shots. Um, Liam Sharp, amazing, shot a, 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 a photo story for us in Africa about a company called Videre that are fighting human rights abuses, where he basically had to turn up. They wouldn't tell him where he was going. The, they, we couldn't even tell him what town he was going to be shooting in. He had to turn up to find somebody because he was shooting people that were in danger. So to get a shot like that in the background of some weird wasteland that he didn't even know where he was going to go, I think it's pretty impressive. Um, Tom Nagy, these were on It's Nicer, actually. We sent somebody along to Lego, um, which was a, a re you know, beautiful opportunity. We're all Lego fans, and to um, send Tom, who normally does car photography, to do something like that was, was a real treat. OK, here we go. Chris Christman we, uh, shooting Richard Branson. We had, we had seven minutes um, with Richard Branson that turned into four minutes by the time he turned up. Um, Chris is brilliant, a brilliant photographer, and he already had two lighting setups. We were, we were at, the, um, at the test facility. We got great access. We've been working on the story for two years. It came down to four minutes. He had two setups, lighting setups. That's one of them, and the other one is, um, was shot under a wing, and literally, um, Richard turned up, hello, good, did his thing, amazing, superstar, and literally as we were packing up the stuff, we saw him flying off on his jet as we were still packing the stuff up. That was a bit hairy, but I think he got the shot. Um, just to wrap up, this is point five. I've spoken very fast, sorry, I apologise, but I hope there's been um, something for you in there. Get another project. Um, I, am, I am blessed with Wired magazine in that... Um, I get to do some really fun, creative work. Um, but whether you're, at a, 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 you're in a position where you feel like you can do that kind of work, or whether you're in a, a frustrating role, 
I would heartily recommend that everybody else find themselves something else to do as well. This is a, uh, a magazine that I published with my brother called The Ride Journal. And um, we've been doing it in, a, in a, exactly the same amount of time as Wired magazine. Unfortunately, I've only done eight copies of The Ride Journal and 60 of Wired, so that says something about how I spend my time. But the, the point being that I get something that I, I get to use a completely different part of myself as a designer with the Ride Journal. I don't know if anybody's seen it. It's very simple, it's very uncomplicated. Whereas Wired is all about the new and exciting and you know, being confrontational with the reader, the Ride Journal is very, very simple. And I think I, I love to see designers or creatives come to see me with with personal projects because it says a lot about them and, and about how passionate they are and about how they like to get how like how they like to get um, work out there and I think it's a self fulfilling prophecy. You have um, you know you you have a you have an outlet for your best work. People can see you're passionate. They can come with you along that journey, and then I think you can you can you know you can up your creativity and people can see really what you're capable of. And um, yeah, that's. I think is about it.